Hello, it's my rankings of all UK Eurovision entries, places 12 to 8. Welcome to Matt Loves Eurovision. Please do click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. And as always, please do like, share and comment below. Quite exciting uh, spatch uh, this time, uh, as we enter, finally enter uh, the top 10 in this group. And as you might expect, uh, with the UK having 15 runners up and, and five number ones, uh, or five winning songs, which would fill a top 20, um, we're going to expect some highly placed songs uh, in this group. And indeed, four of the five that we're looking through today uh, were runners up um, at Eurovision. And indeed are not just kind of classic UK Eurovision entries, but they're just full all time classic uh, Eurovision entries of no matter where of all countries. We'll start off with uh, number 12, which is 1970, Mary Hopkin, Knock Knock, Who's There? Mary Hopkin was probably most famous uh, previously and still is for the song Those Were The Days, which were a, was a huge worldwide hit um, in 19, uh, 1968. Um, it had been produced by um, Paul McCartney. Indeed, uh, Mary Hopkin was one of the first kind of artists that were signed on to the Beatles' own uh, own label that they had, uh, they had set up. Nevertheless, Knock Knock Who's There was also very successful, reached number two in the UK charts, um, and it was number two at Eurovision as well, coming as a runner-up, of course, to Dana and all kinds of everything. Um, I think Mary Hopkins' delivery was beautifully crystal clear, uh, and obviously uh, it did. Uh, it's a great song. Mary herself, I think, and I, well, I certainly understand this, was never that, was not quite so fond uh, of the song, um, although you could never have told that from her delivery uh, and from the success that it had. At number 11, it's 1959, Pearl Carr and Teddy Johnson sing Little Birdie. Neath the bird on the branch Neath the branch on a tree Neath the tree in the meadow Where you said you loved me Sing little birdie, sing your song Sing you help our love along Sing little birdie up a this was the UK's second uh, entry at Eurovision after a fairly kind of, perhaps we might say, subdued start uh, a couple of years earlier. Um, Sing Little Birdie really showed the UK getting into its stride and uh, put down a marker in some ways for the next, well, 30 years really of successful uh, UK entries. This, of course, was the, fir was the first ever runner up that the UK had uh, and the first of 15 runners up entries that the UK had. Um, it's such an upbeat and lovely song. It's, it has some little twee moments. They have a, a little bird that they hold up, uh, and they're obviously not a real one. Uh, and you think, oh, it's, it's also almost kind of an early type of Eurovision, sort of you know, cheesy Eurovision staging um, in a way. But it was, uh, they were a real life couple. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it tells a, little, a lovely sort of story from sort of, you know, um, early on all through how that lasts through many years and marriage, etc. Like that. And, it's, and they sing it with such conviction and joy. Um, it really is a you know, lot fun. And again, as I've said this in quite a few of the other, um, uh, the other sort of rankings, um, about the other songs, it really contrasts with some of the kind of more very serious chanson that you get at the Eurovision at the time. Um, they remained a couple for the rest of their lives, and in fact, um, only recently sort of passed away. Uh, Teddy at 98, a couple of years ago, and Pearl Carr earlier on this year in 2020, also at the age of 98, but they will long be remembered uh, in UK Eurovision history. And here we are, number 10. It's 1972, The New Seekers Beg, Steal or Borrow. So 
so the late sixties and early seventies saw kind of uh, that kind of sort of folk pop. Uh, groups uh, becoming quite popular uh, and obviously Eurovision sort of caught up with that in the UK, Sweden and Norway all had kind of folk pop um, uh, bands enter, sort of, you know, moving away from single you know, uh, single performers to groups and of course ABBA um, was one of those that, that, that came from that group, they originally started as a folk pop group. Um, the New Seekers were, were, were also folk pop although moving more to sort of general pop um, and they were a sort of well, they were almost completely new from the original The Seekers. It was just a single band member that decided to keep the name because people might recognise it. Um, but yeah, it's a really enjoyable song. Again, runner runner up. Um, but I think it presaged kind of a lot of success for kind of those types of pop bands. We had ABBA obviously winning in 1974, Teach in 1975, and then of course Bullet Man winning in 1976. So they uh, almost won, but uh, certainly set the scene for kind of the success of those sorts of groups in the mid 70s. At number nine, it's 1996, GG, who are just a little bit. So Gina G was, uh, is an Australian singer uh, that brought this kind of high energy Eurodance cheese uh, hit to Eurovision. Um, it was a huge, huge commercial success. It reached number one in the UK. The last UK, in fact, the last Eurovision song to reach number one in the UK, but it did fantastically well across the world. And indeed it even got high in the charts in the United States. And it's probably the only Eurovision song to have charted high in the US in the last 40 years or so. Um, why did it only finish eighth then? Which is, although anyone finishing eighth now would be considered a pretty good result. But back then it was, it, it felt like far too low. Probably, lots of the live performance was not perhaps as good as it might have been, uh, to be fair. Um, and also this was just before we hit Televotes. Uh, this was all still done by a jury, so one might have expected it would have done. I think it would have stormed the televote if we'd just been a few years later. I'm sure uh, GGG probably might well have won in those sorts of circumstances. Nevertheless, it's an enduring classic, and it's a song that really is broken out of the and People do know this song very well, so I think all in all, a big success. And at number eight, it's 1968. Cliff Richard and congratulations. Congratulations and jubilations. I want the world to know I'm happy as can be. Who would believe that I could be happy and contented? Congratulations is one of the all time great Eurovision entries, very well known by uh, both people that know the contest well, but also outside of the contest. And of course, famously, it came second. It was the huge favourite to win, and obviously, Marcel with, uh, for Spain and La 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 won. Um, some people said it was, it was a fix, but actually, I think uh, it was a, a genuine win, but goodness me, he came close. I don't think it affected uh, Cliff too much, uh, because I think he still, you know, he still sings this song at great performances. Um, he uh, actually uploaded a remastered or a, a, um, a version onto his own YouTube recently to sort of coincide with his 80th uh, birthday. Um, and it's been used by Eurovision itself when they, it was it, the, the, the 50th anniversary um, TV program or concert, it was called Congratulations. So while it may not have won, it certainly got a sort of never place in kind of Eurovision history and still is a lot of fun to this day. So some great Eurovision classics in that group, but come back for my penultimate rankings video to see some more UK classics. Mm -hmm. 